Hello everybody and welcome to our final race of the weekend that we're covering from Lime Rock Park, Connecticut. It's John Hindoff, Shea Adam and Jeremy Shaw as we're getting ready for the 100 minute challenge for TCR Carzoni. We're at Lakeville, Connecticut in beautiful countryside. It is a green and pleasant land. It's a one and a half mile uh, circuit with a uh, seven turns and we are only using the seven turns uh, here because we don't use the chicane at turn five the uphill not really a chance for overtaking there but certainly is at turn one maybe if you're pretty brave into west bend at turn six and then the downhill at turn seven you have to be absolutely alongside at that point but the real overtaking spot is down at the first corner at turn one hello everybody just after at nine o'clock in the uk and 10 o'clock in europe for our international viewers on the world feed tv uh, Shea Adam is down in the pit lane on a, an afternoon that has turned out to be rather lovely uh, at Lime Rock Park. At the moment, 27 Celsius in the air is 81. And the uh, track temperature is 29. So that's 84 on the track and 81 in the air, Shea. And everybody is ready to go. Are you ready to go? Hello, John. Yes, I am ready to go. We got 14 cars on the grid lined up. Engines have not yet fired because Beth Peretta, who is the honorary starter and local girl, has not yet given the command. But we are in that holding period where all the cars are lined up, all the drivers are behind the wheels, and we are ready to go. Jeremy Shaw is in the booth with me. Uh, as well, at least virtually. Uh, this is the, uh, the comparative race to the GS race that we had at Detroit at the early part of June. Uh, that was a barn burner, and this one could be just as exciting, Jeremy. That's exactly right. So it's the sixth round then for TCI. As you see, uh, they weren't at Detroit, uh, but they are here at Lime Rock Park, and everybody loves coming to Lime Rock Park. Good field of cars, uh, very, very tight. We saw some uh, tremendous pace in qualifying yesterday with the pole sitter uh, e even going several tenths of a second faster than the old GS lap record uh, around here. So a remarkable effort to win the pole for Matt Pombo once again. But can he finally translate it into a victory? He's on, been on pole now for five of this season's six races, yet, however, to do better than a third place finish. Uh, we have got 20 cars due out on the track. I don't think we had any major problems over... Uh, sorry, 14 cars uh, on the track over the weekend. Uh, I don't think we had any problems. I w I'm sorry, I was being greedy. I wanted 20 cars and I was hoping for 20 cars. But I'm going to, Jeremy, accept the 14 cars. Uh, any particular advantages you see for any of the, uh, any of the different manufacturers? Uh, no, uh, I mean, it's been a, a pretty open season so far. Hondas have been the fastest cars as often as not, uh, with uh, now five pole positions in the six races, all of them fall into the same driver. Uh, but uh, that's the only mark that yet has a, a, to, to score a victory. Uh, you've had uh, two wins for Alfa Romeo, two wins for Audi, one for Hyundai in the five previous races. And they seem to be pretty closely matched uh, going from... Uh, qualifying yesterday, it was, I mean, a stonking lap once again from Matt Bombo. He really is the master of the one lap in a TCR car in particular. Uh, and uh, just well underneath the old lap record. But we saw uh, the top uh, uh, seven drivers are all faster than the uh, existing lap record. So that just shows you the pace of these guys. And I think it's going to be a really interesting race. Uh, Hyundai is in second, third, fourth and fifth on the grid. The best of the Audis is in sixth. The Alfa a little bit farther back down the field. But um, uh, you know, don't count that car out just yet. I think the biggest key here, John, today is going to be to looking after these Michelin tyres. Yes, the left rear, uh, the rear tyres on TCRs don't normally get a lot of work, but the left rear does work here, and we are not using either the chicane or the extended part uh, of uh, um, the turn six west bend tell you what we've only got 14 cars to run down they're not rolling uh, quite yet so let's have tim gray play the music from up in london engines have just fired in fact
and Jeremy Shaw can so, give us the grid. So, yes, the Lime Rock Part 100, round six of the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge. Seventh row of the grid on the outside, Dr. Will Talley in car number 73. That's one of two LA Honda World Racing Honda Civic FL5 TCR. It's a new car The bookend this field, in actual fact. Jordan Wisely will start in the 13th position for Daily Motorsports. That's one of its two Hyundai Elantra NTCRs, car number 74. On row six of the grid, Eric Rockwell in car number 15, one of two Rockwell Autosport Development Audi RS3 LMS sequential gearbox cars. And then the second of the Daily Motorsports Hyundais, car number 70, is Jacob Daly. Preston Brown, a really good qualifying run for him in the second uh, Rockwell Autosport Development Audi, car number 10, alongside Ryan Block, twice a winner this season in the KMW Motorsports with TMR Engineering. Alfa Romeo Giulietta Veloce TCR. Row four, Victor Gonzalez, the Victor Gonzalez racing team Honda Civic FK7, the older model TCR Honda, kind of a 99. Alongside Luca Mars, making his front wheel drive debut this weekend in car number 90 for Van der Stur Racing. That's an older Hyundai Veloster NTCR. Then the Audi RS3 LMS TCR for Unitronic JDC Melamos, what's car number 17, is Chris Miller. And then the phalanx of uh, Brian Herder will sport cars, well, two of them particularly. Number one, Michael Lewis will start in the fifth position. Uh, in fourth position, his teammate Robbie Wickens in car number 33. Uh, and then uh, between him and the final Brian Hurt Autosport car is a Van der Stur Racing entry, kind of a 91, that's Brian Ortiz from Puerto Rico. Uh, Mark Wilkins will start in the second position on the grid in car number 98, but on the pole position is uh, LA Honda World Racing Honda Civic, Matt Pombo in car number 37 for the seventh time in his career, his fifth time this season, and sixth time in the last seven races, because he was on the, also on the pole the final round of the 2022 season. So a small but perfectly formed field as they come around. Uh, everybody has left the pit lane, which is good news. Uh, I d I, this is a tough one, Jeremy, because we know how quick these cars are. We know how tight it was in qualifying. Uh, we don't have the, and, and I say this in the nicest way for, for, for the drivers and the teams here, we don't have the distractions of the DS, the GS cars here. Um, these cars are immensely quick, particularly through the first part of the circuit here. Um, pick a winner. I, the new FL5 is quick. It hasn't quite had the reliability yet. Hyundai's, well, we know all about the Elantra. The Veloster is the older car, but it's running to a slightly different ride height on its day. The Alpha can be there or thereabouts. Is it going to be about tactics and tyre management? Yes, it is, because this track is hard on tyres. Uh, these uh, front-wheel drive cars, they're pushing out nearly 350 horsepower. That's a lot of horsepower to go th all the way through the front wheels. They're also uh, got to turn the car into the corners as well. And this is a, a track that's always uh, pretty, pretty hard on tyres, and particularly for front-wheel drive, I think. So uh, keeping those tyres underneath them for what will be a, uh, a two-stint race, 100 minutes. These cars can, can, can certainly do... Uh, well over an hour uh, on uh, on a tank of fuel, so it, it certainly opens up the strategic decisions for the teams that the teams will have to make somewhat. Uh, one hour, 40 minutes, 100 minutes uh, at this FC Euro Northeast Grand Prix presented by Liquid Molly Weekend. And this is the closing race of our Super Saturday. If you're being with us for the whole day, thank you very much for spending your Saturday with us. If you're here at the track, thank you very much as well for voting with your feet, your dollars, your gas purchases, etc. to be here. And it's great to see so many of you at the track side. And uh, thank goodness the weather gods have smiled uh, on the track this weekend. Absolutely perfect conditions. Uh, just after a quarter past the hour and we're waiting for the cars to come round to the start. It's Jeremy Shaw, John Hindorf and Shea Adam rounding off your IMSA weekend. Woohoo! We get a day off tomorrow. That's going to be interesting. The Acura... <laughs> It's a lot to watch. The Acura safety car is in the lane and it's side by side for seven rows of TCRs. The action's about to get underway. 
We have 100 minutes on the clock. Start the countdown. We're green flag and racing at Lime Rock Park. Great getaway by Matt Pombo, who takes the inside line and dives right-handed into the first corner. The two Rockwell Auto Development cars getting very close together, and one of them has gone off and slide sideways through the dirt just a bonus doesn't go all the way to the fence that's preston brown in the number 10 car he was right alongside his teammate eric rockwell who had the inside line so it's a good start from eric and the 10 car has resumed with stay under green flag conditions pombo then from that's Matt, that is Mark Wilkins in second place. Then Van der Stur racing. Brian Ortiz trying to get in amongst it there. That's been a good start for him in the Elantra as he goes through. Looks like the Velocitas up there as well. I can see the second Van der Stur racing car, the blue and white machine, in what? That's, that's fifth position. So that car has moved up as well. Cross the line, they go for the first of laps and they will happen very, very quickly. Indeed, Matt Pombo from pole position did exactly the right thing. All the action, Jeremy Shaw behind with two teammates, in fact, going three wide further back down through the, uh, down through the field there. And uh, good news is everybody survives. So that number 10 car, Preston Brown, Jeremy, has recovered and is now right at the back of the field, just coming through uh, up to the uphill now as the leaders are on the downhill. Yeah, indeed, and uh, it was a, a good start for uh, Michael Lewis on that first lap, made up a position in car number one. Uh, certainly, Brian Ortiz in that third position right now in car number 91. He thought about trying to get past Mark Wilkins on that first couple of corners, but wasn't able to do so, slots back into third position. So through they go again in the afternoon sunshine. Now, Jeremy, before the tweets start coming in at Ipsa Radio, these cars can do at least an hour. In fact, we, we've seen some of the GT3 cars doing more than an hour here. You're not on throttle uh, for an awful lot of this circuit. So. I dare say most of these cars could do almost all the race without a pit stop. That's not the way it has to work here because they're minimum drive times to think about. That's right. Uh, it, it, both drivers in each of the cars has to do a minimum of uh, 40 minutes behind the wheel. And uh, Matt Pombo now coming under increasing pressure. A perfect start for him. And uh, did somebody there move out of line? It's like not allowed to move out of line until you, you uh, cross the start finish line. That's a good point. It looks like the... Yeah, the second place car kind of tucked into line there. That was Mark Wilkins. Not supposed to do that. Um, so we'll have to see what the race control says about that. I'm sure the, uh, the start is always under review. Correct. But uh, it's already now Matt Pombo coming under in increasing pressure from Mark Wilkins in that second position in kind of a 98. So... Line astern, the top three come down through the final corner. The red and white Honda. This is the new shape, Honda, the new body shape for the Honda Civic FL5. Uh, the previous version, and we do have one, is an FK, FK7. Um, this is very much the way of the world with automotive manufacturers. They go through the alphabet. So... Um, an L is newer than a K. We have that in the BMW ranks uh, as well, where uh, F is younger, uh, is older rather than a G. G's the newer car. And in fact, if you look on your VIN numbers on your street cars, you'll see something similar with that as well. So this is the new shape for from the. It's the eighth number from the inches. Just <laughs> told me. <laughs> And she's now zipping up her anorak. Uh, up to the start-finish line, there is a battle for the lead. And Mark Wilkins pulls to driver's left. Got a really good run down through turn seven. It was alongside at the stripe. The gap was 0 0.069 as they went across the line. And he went to the left-hand side of the track. That really is a very difficult manoeuvre to pull off 
into turn one because turn one and turn two, Big Bend really has to be thought of as two corners, Jeremy, and trying to get that outside pass done there. We've seen it happen, but seldom does it happen. You really need to have had a lot of extra speed going into the first turning for Big Bend. You do, and uh, you've got to be incisive if you're going to make a pass. It's, it's really tricky to pass around here. And the, the best thing, I think, for Mark Wilkins to do is just keep Matt, Matt Pombo under pressure uh, and hope he makes some mistakes or uses his, his tyres rather harder than he would, he would wish. Because uh, that's uh, if the car slides sideways, which he will do sooner or later, <laughs> uh, then he's got to be in a position to pounce. Uh, good, consistent laps, actually. It was the best lap of the race so far for the race leader. Uh, 54.75, the fastest lap of the race, however, set a couple of laps ago now by Mark Wilkins, 54.73. So very, very closely matched. I'm sure at this stage in the race, Mark Pombo is just kind of pacing himself to what he feels is a comfortable pace to get to get him through his full stint without burning off those tyres too much. Of course, he's got plenty of experience in these cars as well. This, after all, is his 96th start in, uh, in the uh, Mission and Pilot Challenge. Bit of a gap opening up between Matt Pombo and the rest of the field. Stick go across this time. Matt puts the fastest lap of the race in, and it's almost a second. Not sure I was expecting to see this, particularly not early on. There is a delicate balance to be struck here, Jeremy, between performance and longevity on those Michelin tyres. The left, both of the fronts and the left rear have to work really, really hard here. And I'm hoping that Matt Pombo is uh, not at the moment, to coin a phrase, uh, cashing checks early on that his bank account won't be able to pay at the end of the stint. Very, very good point, and that's certainly uh, going to be uh, something to keep an eye on here as this race goes on, because uh, it's, yeah, it, I mean, what perfect conditions we've got here for racing this afternoon. I mean, shadows are lengthening, uh, but just, uh, you know, a comfortable temperature, not super hot like it often is at this race at this time of year. Uh, and the the, uh, the poor weather that, that was forecast for yesterday happily didn't materialise at all. Uh, positive thinking there, I think, was the, uh, the decisive factor in that yes, one. That's right. uh, and uh, we've had a great day of racing, and this is a really already developing into a really intriguing contract mm. contest. Yeah, everybody blew at the sky yesterday and made sure that the rain cloud stayed away, which I thought was an excellent team effort. Well done, everybody, at Lime Rock Park. Ella Honda World Racing, Honda Civic leads from the usual horde of Hyundais. Five of them from positions uh, two to six. Then it's the first of the Audis. Chris Miller for Unitronics, JDC Miller. Huge crowd on hand here. Everybody staying to see the end of the race. Hello to you all on the bank sides, enjoying the weather. And it is the typical Lime Rock crowd here. Everybody knows and enjoys their sports car racing and GT racing. And they know the nuances. They bring their lawn chairs. They bring their cool boxes. They settle themselves in for the day. And this one, effectively one day Saturday event, there was some practice in qualifying yesterday. But, and there was a decent crowd on hand for this uh, yesterday. But looks absolutely fabulous that everyone has turned up in force to support their IMSA, favourite IMSA championships. And this pilot challenge setting off exactly as we expected at some pace. First three breaking away now from Michael Lewis for Brian Hurtner in third place. Good lap yeah. last time around for Luca Mars, graduate of Edimitsu Mazda MX-5, has worked his way up through the IMSA developmental series, Jeremy, and he's just put the, his fastest lap of the race in, in fifth position in the Van der Stur Racing Veloster, which is working to slightly different balance of performance and certainly ride height from the Elantras. It's a slightly older car, but with a lot of the same running gear. Yeah, but runs a lot lower to the uh, is uh, allowed to run a lot lower to the ground, so it, uh, it is able to use the uh, little bit of ground effect that these cars do have more effectively than the the newer Elantra. That was uh, Eric Rockwell off the road there at the left hand. I wonder, wonder what happened to him. He lost uh, three or four positions on that last lap, uh, so he slipped behind uh, 
several other cars. We've seen both Rockwell cars off the road. Well, Preston Brown is making some progress towards catching the back of the pack. The other guy that's on the move is young Jacob Diley in car number 70. He completed the first lap in 13th position, now up to 10th. He's made a couple of passes. He's got past uh, Will Talley and his own teammate, Jordan Wisely. So the question for me, Jeremy, and it's I, I, I put this out there. I, I, I don't know, and I'm not sure any of us know, and I'm not sure if we ask the teams, they would even tell us, is how are they going to split this 100-minute race up? 250 minutes, split it in the middle. Yeah, you could do it that way. The uh, standards uh, driver time is 40, 40 minutes to get you qualified and the car qualified through the race so yes you could wait till you know just the lap after 40 minutes and and bring your first driver in then or you could probably send your driver to 58 minutes bring him in and then send your second driver out for the last 40 minutes there's more than one way here to skin the rabbit the rabbit being a 100 minute race here yeah, that's absolutely right. And uh, certainly for, for the drivers, for the, for the cars and teams that have one driver who is faster than the other for whatever reason, experience, uh, whatever, then uh, they will make that uh, stop as, as soon as they can to get the faster driver in. Uh, in uh, Michael Lewis's uh, situation, car number one, he's sharing that car with Taylor Hagler as he has done uh, successfully to win the championship each of the last two year seasons. Generally, it is Taylor that starts the, the car and then Michael finishes, but this time it's going to be Taylor who will uh, take the, the closing stint in this race. Michael, of course, has a lot more experience. He also won the championship a couple of years before that uh, with, uh, with uh, Mark Wilkins in the same team. So he will probably stay out as long as he can before uh, sharing that number one car with Taylor Hagler. On the other hand, uh, Roy Block, in number five, Alfa Romeo, currently running in ninth position. Uh, he isn't as quick as his co-driver, Tim Lewis Jr. And I know that Tim will get in as soon as he can after that 40-minute mark. So there's different strategies. For the leader, Matt Pombo, he's going to be sharing that car with Ryan Eversley. Well, Ryan needs no introduction. He's one of the most experienced drivers in this, well, he's the most experienced driver in this field with uh, 126 starts previously to his name. So uh, those two are very equally matched. And I would be... I, I, I would think they will split this race almost uh, equally in halves for Matt Pombo and Ryan Eversley. Shea Adam is our eyes and ears at the circuit, and she's down in the pit lane. Where else would we find Gearbox Girl? And she's uh, in the pit lane at the moment at Hyundai. Who are you with, Shea? Tyler Maxson, because a couple races ago I found you in less happy situations, but now you've got a very racy Hyundai beneath you. You feeling like today could be a breakthrough podium, maybe even a win? Yeah, that's what we're hoping. We're, uh, we're hoping to get our first win of the year today. Um, we think we have a really fast Hyundai launcher in, um, but, you know, all these races are so hard to win. Um, I feel like we've been so close so many times. We just have never been able to actually finish it, so we're hoping we can finish the job today. Brian's been doing an absolutely awesome job, and see what it holds for us. You guys are really closely matched on pace. That kind of opens up the strategy book a little bit. It means you just have to play to minimum drive time, but not necessarily to either one of you. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, It opens up our strategy options a lot. It really makes it a not never easy races to call on strategy, but it makes it a whole lot easier than, uh, than the alternative. And yeah, Brian's just been doing an awesome job. It really helps us to, uh, to not be sort of handicapped, I would say. It just like, opens up the opportunity so much more. Is it harder that the race is so late in the day? Like, you've had all this pent-up energy. Uh, sort of, yeah. I, I really like morning races because typically for these afternoon ones, I just end up overthinking it. But uh, no, just a good mental reset in the truck before we, uh, before we came down to pit lane and get ready to go. Run a P3 now. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Very interesting. And I feel that we are so fortunate to have drivers who can talk to us the way they do in the heat of battle and from the pit lane we get so much good information good opportunity to say thank you to all the teams uh, the pr reps team representatives and the drivers for making sure that we get fed information particularly as this weekend uh, we're not at the circuit along with our nbc colleagues uh, working remotely 
and it's really helpful to get the flow of information both at the track and further afield. So thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. What yeah, and tell you what, uh, uh, John, uh, for Tyler Baxter, I mean, just you wouldn't think he's 18 years of age, would you? Uh, hearing from him, there, he sounds he's so mature, really, really fine young man from uh, from Bogart in Georgia, uh, and uh, he, he's another guy who's got a lot of a, a big future in this sport. I mean, he's wise beyond his years, and uh, he's uh, certainly a, a big. Uh, Feather in this team's cap to have him with with them, and he'll be driving the second stint in this race after taking over from Brian Ortiz. By the way, we've got a new we had that uh, fastest lap of the race by Matt Pombo is a new lap record uh, by a couple of tenths of a second over the mark that Harry Gottsacker set one year ago. The cars in TCR are a little bit lighter, actually quite a bit lighter, 40 kilos lighter than they were last year, so no surprise there. But. Again, Matt Pombo, he's, you know, he's, he's measuring himself. He's not pushing too hard too soon, he hopes. Crossing the line, the very lovely and very different adding variety, the Alfa Romeo and Gile Giulietta Veloce TCR. This is the number five car going through the first corner now. I love the fact it's got the yellow uh, European style continental headlights. Uh, on that car. Roy Block started that car for KMW Motorsports with TMR. It's a car that on its day can run at the front of the field. It's only 20 seconds off the leader at the moment. Certainly you wouldn't mistake it for any of the other hatchbacks in the in the car park with that very distinctive Alfa Romeo shield grille. I ran one of those as a road car a few years ago, the five-door version. Very lovely. Front wheel drive cars, such a lot of fun, particularly when conditions are slippery. Track is as good as it's been, I would say, this couple, last couple of days. 29 Celsius is only 84 Fahrenheit. We had it up at 124 Fahrenheit uh, on Friday. Air, air temperature 81 is, what, 27 Celsius. Uh, a beautiful weekend. And uh, well done to all of you for turning up here at the track and watching at Lime Rock Park. Racing has been absolutely stunning. Pombo comes through to complete another lap. It was 1.6 seconds last time around. And as he goes through now, it's 1.7. So just easy, tiny fractions of a second away. And we've seen this in the other races, Jeremy Shaw, this weekend. The I think, frankly, lovely opportunity to see the drivers and cars working together, finding a half a tenth here, a quarter of a tenth there. And in the short laps that we have here, you really see that for what it's worth here when a good driver is working his car and getting the best out of it. Yeah, really interesting, isn't it? Certainly, and uh, uh, looking at the gaps down through the field, I mean, he's pulling away maybe maybe a tenth of a second or so a lap from Mark Wilkins in second position. Brian Ortiz, similar margin back now in third position, but they're pulling away now from Michael Lewis, who, who's a full uh, almost seven seconds behind the race leader. Uh, and then behind him, a gap, uh, uh, well, there is no gap because Luca Mars is right there doing a great job in his first drive. Uh, first race in the front wheel drive car. Robbie Wickens right with him, and they're pulling away from this battle we're watching come across the start finish now, which is Chris Miller, who certainly lost a bit of pace uh, over the last few laps. He is struggling to keep Victor Gonzalez behind him. Yeah, Victor. Super consistent pace by the race leader. 55 ones each of the last uh, four laps for our race leader, Matt Pombo. Victor is right there on the tailgate of that Unitronics car. Chris Miller in seventh position in the yellow, white and black Audi coming to the uphill now. Turns in right-handed, get the car balanced, get on the throttle as quickly as you can, but you can't afford to drift out to the left-hand side here. The black and white Victor Gonzalez racing team. So we're used to seeing that car in previous years in red and white colours. This is their... 2023 20, livery gets a great run out of turn number seven and has to pull out to the right hand side because he was gaining on the back of the Audi so quickly and as soon as he pulled out to the right hand side he started to drop back didn't have the 
advantage of the Audi making the hole in the air in front of him. Very interesting to see that, Jeremy, because Victor got a great exit from turn seven that time around. Yeah, he did, didn't he? And uh, he's certainly a good bit fast for this stage in the game. Chris Miller uh, and Mikey Taylor will be sharing at number 17. Car, that is the car that won the most recent race north of the border, Canadian Time Motorsport Park, just a couple of weeks ago. But uh, right now, it seems to have, yeah, I think he's got through the best of his tyres, as Chris Miller. He's hanging on there. And Victor Gonzalez is a good bit faster. But being faster and then finding a way around, well, those are two completely different scenarios. Still battling on, same part of the circuit, same sort of answer. Victor again pulls out. He might just be trying to get a bit of cooling air into the radiator of that LA Honda World Civic. Hearing from Ryan Eversley over the early part of the weekend, i.e. yesterday, that that car is very warm inside. We were sort of raising an eyebrow, Roger Moore style, uh, about that because it is, yes, a new body shell, but JAS Jazz in Italy, who for the longest of times have developed Honda racing cars in both TCR and indeed the NSX as well. And they, yes, they've used the new body shell, the FL5, but uh, the running gear is pretty much unchanged, so we sort of questioned what the difference was in the installation or maybe the aero in those cars that made the passenger cockpit, the driver cockpit, so much warmer. And I just wonder if Victor is keeping an eye on his gauges, as all good drivers do, making sure he's not right up the tailpipes of that Audi. Close yeah, in again, he's... though, through Big Bend. Yeah, you know, he's, he's a lot quicker than uh, than Chris Miller. Chris is he's 56-6 last time around. Uh, his best lap of the race was a 55-0. Uh, the, the race leader, he's lost a little bit of pace the last couple of laps as well. 55-7 last time around. But uh, that lead from first to second is still over a couple of seconds. Meanwhile, Roy Block in that Alpha, he is uh, actually hauling a little bit closer now to that battle ahead of him with Chris Miller in number 17 car and Victor Gonzalez number 99. I really wish Alpha would have produced a street version of that car with those wide-bodied arches on. It's absolutely phenomenal. Don't care about the rear spoiler. I can do without a rear spoiler. Oh, problem. And uh, we've lost a wheel. On, well, we haven't lost a wheel. My wheels are all in place. But the number 70, uh, Jacob Diley, uh, Hyundai Elantra, left front wheel has gone. It's gone air wall and it looks, oh, that looks like it stripped the end of the hub. The wheel nut was not there. We have seen in other series with TCR cars, the wheel centers fail. And that in that uh, situation, you see the uh, lug nut still there, but that has, the whole thing has come away. He was coming up the uphill and it had already happened. And the wheel, he and the wheel has parted company. So that is very, in now, I wonder if the hub has just, part of the hub has just sheared off. In comes Luca Mar. Mars for the Hyundai Velosta. We've only had 23 minutes, so we're not at minimum driver time, but this might bring out a full course yellow. Shea Adam is watching the Velosta and Luca Mars, the number 90. Oh, no, the wheels are spinning while the car is up on the air jack. They have not yet finished the service. There's actually a spark on the ground underneath the car as they put two new front tires on. They topped them off with a lot of fuel. Luca, as you rightly say, minimum drive time nowhere near having been met. And now Luca is going back out. The pits are still open. We are not under a full course caution as of yet, but that car now will be completely out of contention because it's going to have to serve a drive through penalty for those wheels spinning. Well, Jacob's gone off at turn six, West Bend, and he's run on to part of the old circuit, I reckon, Jeremy, that we used to use in the American Le Mans series days when we extended that West Bend configuration. And I, I think he might be all right there. The race control might deem that he is far enough out of the way and out of the firing line that the marshals, the corner workers there, hardworking, all of them, can re either recover that car or it's it's not in a dangerous position. That's we've stayed green. 
We have stayed green, and uh, that's uh, certainly bad news for number 90 car because uh, I think he's, he's lost the lead lap now, hasn't he, as well? Uh, I mean, he'll gain that back when everybody else makes their pit stop, but uh, with an hour and 15 minutes remaining, yeah, maybe he can get the... If there's a course, 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 he might be able to get the end yeah. from here, he, actually. He's got uh, the two leaders right ahead of him, Jeremy, and he's yeah. got the advantage of new... Michelin front tyres, it's not beyond the bounds of possibility that on pace he could actually unlap himself here from the two cars ahead of him. Those are the two cars ahead of the blue and white VDSR van der Stur, uh, racing Elantra. This is the, the hatchback version, if you will, of the Hyundai and he's right now with Mark Wilkins and gaining on him. Indeed so and uh this is going to be really interesting. I, 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 I'm presuming they think they can get to the end uh, from here. Uh, so, you know, that, that was a, uh, a call that that team made purposely. Of course, the, the bad news is he's got to make this uh, tyres last to the end of the race. So he's got to be careful not to get greedy here. He might have the pace advantage with the change of tyres, but uh, you've got to make sure he doesn't use up too much of, those, of that uh, Michelin rubber too soon. I'm right in seeing though, Shea, that Luke Amar started that car, so we've not seen the second driver in that car. Is that correct? Correct. They need to put their other driver in that car, and that would be Rory Vanderster. So Rory is very much chomping at the bit to get behind the wheel of the Hyundai, and they will have to come in again, but they will be doing that drive through for the wheel spinning. There might actually be another pit lane penalty, but that is pending. Okay, Shea. Come in. That, that, is it? Good point, because they haven't reached minimum drive. I'm not quite sure why they've elected to come in. I, I mean, I, they must... Were, were they hoping for a call, full yeah. course caution? Yeah. I guess, but, uh, yeah, no, not, not a good decision, I'm afraid. Needs to unlap himself here and drive away and stay in that car to about 55 minutes um, before he comes in. Remember, time spent in the pits does not count for driving time. So you can't just come in with 40 minutes to go, you've got to give Rory van der Stur in that car. He's got to be out of the pit lane before 40 minutes to go. But that's the, that's the only tactic now for Luca Mars. He's got to drive the wheels off that thing uh, until uh, just over, uh, just before rather, the hour mark has completed. So that's another half an hour from here. And he's got to absolutely thrash that and then give it over to Rory van der Stur. They will need slightly less fuel when uh, he does come into the pit lane. That's the only bright spot on the horizon for that number 90 van der Stur racing Hyundai Velosta. Yeah, meanwhile, the teammate car, number 91, Brian Ortiz, he's been overtaken uh, firstly by Michael Lewis and now on the last up also by Robbie Wickens in car number 33. So Brian Ortiz is now back into fifth position in car number 91. And the first two are pulled away now uh, and are continuing to pull away from Michael Lewis in third. Preston Brown goes a lap down. Take a long time to catch uh, Preston. Has he just got past Jacob Diley? Has he caught Jacob Diley? Uh, excuse me, Jordan Wise yet? Yes, he has. This is going to get a bit dicey for the leaders. Yes, that's a battle position right in front of the race leader. Yeah. Absolutely right. And this will help, actually, Luca Mars, bizarrely, because he's trying to get up to those two uh, leaders. Just a reminder, this is the corresponding race to the single GS race that we had at uh, Detroit on the new downtown course uh, in the early part of June when the GS cars came out to play. So this is the TCR single category race for this event. Matt Pombal leading, barely, from Mark Wilkins. He's not letting him get away. Honda from Hyundai. Then about five seconds to Michael Lewis in the number one. Another Brian Herner Autosport with Kerb Agajanian car. Just keeping an eye on what's going on with that. I don't know, Luca Mars. Has Luca Mars been in and out again, Shea, in that... Uh, number 90 car was that that must have been a penalty that was wheel the penalty. rotation yeah yep that's exactly what it was oh dear that's really taking them out of it what a shame that car had pace no doubt about that so now 
they have to hope for a safety car and try and work something when everybody else pits to get their lap back. Also off the lead lap, Preston Brown and Jordan Wisely, the two, uh, the 10 and the 74, that is the Rockwell Audi and the Daily Motorsports Hyundai Elantra, the number 74. So we have now 10 cars on the lead lap. Eric Rockwell is the last car on the lead lap by my reckoning in the number 13 at the moment. However, he can't be a million miles away in the number 15 car. Sorry, he's just on the front straight now and the leader is not that far behind him, to be honest. This is impressive by Matt Pombo, uh, Jeremy. Very impressive indeed. You don't drive away from Mark Wilkins without having a decent run. No, and uh, Mark Wilkins did uh, close in when he had that uh, bout with the traffic, but uh, uh, what uh, Matt Pombo lost getting past those lapped cars, Mark Wilkins lost on the next lap, so the gap is back out now to three seconds, actually, that's the largest gap it has been between first and second. Uh, Michael Lewis, another four seconds back in third position, so he's doing some really good consistent laps now as Matt Pombo, down in the 55.8 last time around, he was turning very consistent 56, uh, yeah, 50, 55 ones, 55.8 though in this stage, uh, he is, remains the fastest car on the track. That's a race leader, kind of a 37. Uh, just a reminder, and I'll just get Shea to check this, and she can shout this in my ear. Drive time is, the, despite this being a 100-minute race, drive time is the standard 40 minutes here. Shea, that's correct, isn't it? Yes, it is. I, I think I read that on the SSRs, this supplementary regulations uh, earlier on today so 40 minutes or um, around about an hour those are the two times that you've got to look at depending on uh, which way the teams want to split this up you could go 250s of course Jeremy Yes, I, I, I think we, we will see several people doing that, absolutely. Uh, that's, I'm sure, what the, the race leading car will do. Uh, and quite likely the other Brian Hurdle will sport cars as well. I would expect Michael Lewis to try and stay out a little bit longer, perhaps in car number one, but number 30, uh, 33 and 98, which are currently battling for the championship, the uh, number 33 car has the championship lead at the moment, despite having not yet won a race, running in second position, uh, excuse me, running in... Uh, Second position now is the second place car in the championship. That's Mason Philippi and Mark Wilkins. They have one win and three third place finishes to their credit. And the 56 is last time around for our race leader. Did he have some traffic? Yeah, I guess he did. Got past well, uh, Eric Walkwell last time around. Right. Well, I'm hearing now that actually the SSRs as published are wrong. So IMSA published the wrong SSRs. Uh, and it is actually only 30 minutes. I, I'm looking at the SSRs now as published on the IMSA competitor site, and they say 40 minutes. However, I'm being told that they are, that is not correct. So not sure why that's changed and why that hasn't been changed on the, uh, on the documentation that's available on the IMSA site. Uh, I'm going to get that confirmed in a moment or two. So that could be, that will make a big difference to potential. Sheer Adam is seeing some things going on in the pit lane which would sort of support that. So I apologise because I was reading from the SSRs yesterday and today, but apparently uh, they were incorrect. I missed that one as well, so curious. Let's go down to Shea Adam, who's watching prep down in the pit lane. 
It makes a lot more sense that it's 30 minutes because uh, Mikey Taylor does like to get behind the wheel of a race car. He is super eager to get his turn, but it would be strange for him to be already standing on the wall with all of his crew members there with new tires and the fuel nozzle as well. So I think the first car to come in a pit will be the 17 JDC Unitronic Audi as yes, into the pit lane it does come. Have we passed 30 minutes, John? Uh, we have, yes, it's 35, yes. yeah. Then that makes perfect yep. sense because into the box comes this beautiful Audi with the flash of blue on it this weekend for FCP Euro. Mikey Taylor off the wall, runs around, and it will be front tires only for this pit stop as well as the driver change and as much fuel they can pack in as humanly possible. Trying to go to the end from here, maybe, just maybe, they think they can make it work. But this is the first team to jump, the next team to jump might just be the Alpha. No, there's a team further down on the wall getting ready now as well. Wow, very speedy tire change for the Unitronic Audi. We are waiting on the driver change to finish, though, as Chris Miller is having some issue getting the window net plugged in for Mikey Taylor. Now the door shuts, and away goes the car. It was a bit delayed for the driver change, but everything else from the crew's perspective was spot on. Battle at the West Bend at the moment. The Rockwell Auto Development car going a lap back to two of the Hunters. That was the number 15 car driven by Eric Rockwell. And Rockwell dives into the pit lane as the two cars go across the line. Yeah, the gap back. Gap between first and second, around about three seconds. He's been hovering there now for quite a while, but uh, Robbie Wickens is the guy on the move. He's got past his teammate, Michael Lewis. So number 33 ahead of the number one car a couple of laps ago. And in the meantime, the two LA Honda World cars running out front together at the moment. Number 73 car is uh, Will Talley right at the tail end of the lead lap and about to go, I think, a lap down to Matt Pombo. as they head towards Big Bend. 7.8 last time around for our race leader. Lost a little bit of time on that lap did Matt Pombo, but uh, the gap from first and second went from three seconds to just 1.3, so Mark Wilkins taking advantage of that. Robbie Wickens another six seconds back in the third position, just ahead of Michael Lewis by a second or so. Then uh, Brian Ortiz, he's been uh, dropping back from uh, that battle. Whoa, there's a, an off bit of a... Mark Wilkins there uh, gets up into, into ahead of the second of the LA Honda World Civics. He's got a run coming down the hill. He's not far behind. He's, he's closing, closing that gap to Matt Bombo. down to an hour and two minutes. Just a reminder, we could see people go as long as an hour and 10 minutes, changing the supplementary regulations for this event that was made late and not notified to us. Uh, the teams apparently were told in the morning meeting but it still says on the SSRs for the meeting that it's 40 minutes, it's not, it's 30 minutes. The teams clearly understand that. And so we could see people go to an hour and 10 minutes. Wow, it's quite a big change. But, um, you know, it's safe for everybody at least, as long as they... As long as they oh, they know, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, apologies for us getting that wrong, but uh, we're only reading from official documentation. So, unfortunately, if we're not told about it, we can't know it. Bit of a missed communication there. Thank you to Nate Siebens, who is head of communications. So he's done his job and let us know uh, as the race started. And uh, that was uh, a misapprehension that we were under yesterday. And in fact, I've just checked the regs and they still say 40 minutes. 
But now we've got a battle for the lead because uh, that number 37 car, Matt Pombo, in his looming larges, mirrors Mark Wilkins is right there. Former series champion. Ooh, he slices down the inside of, uh, I think that's Jordan Wisely, isn't it? In, uh, car number 74 just about gets out of the way and that cost a bit of momentum to Mark Wilkins a great move that was for Mark Wilkins for Matt Pombo is able to extend his lead just a little bit again over that uh, pursuing number 98 Mark Wilkins In third position then is uh, Robert Wickens. He's, he's closing in as well, last couple of laps. And a couple of, of, of clear laps in, in that number 33 car. It's a full second faster than race leader last time around. That car slides sideways coming over the, the brow of the hill there at the uphill corner. Just about an hour remaining in this race. So 40 minutes down, an hour to go. And I'm expecting the race leader will stay out for another 10 minutes before he makes his first pit stop. The question is, does Mark Wilkins come in a little bit sooner, get on fresh tyres, uh, and maybe his uh, co-driver, Mark uh, Harry Gottsacker, can uh, pull out a bit of a bit of a uh, bit of a gap. Brian Ortiz into the pit lane for the Elantra of Van der Stur Racing, and Sheer Adam is watching that. Fuel tires and a driver change as Tyler Maxson has taken over for Brian Ortiz and a very clean stop for Vandersturk. No issues with that one. As also into the pit lane is Diley with their remaining Hyundai Elan. That one being the 74 driver change there as well as now it's time for Kappa Bingham to take over. So who's next into the pit lane, then who jumps? The problem is, Jeremy, really, you've got to come in if you're at the sharp end of the field. Here comes... Uh, who else has just dropped in there? No, that's the 74 car. That's Jordan Wisely from Daily Motorsport. So he's coming from the back of the field. Yeah. I'm surprised we haven't seen the Alpha yet. Calibre 55, I would have thought, would have been in at uh, one of the earlier opportunities. We've got 42 minutes gone in the race, 57 now remaining, so they get, can get to the end from here. Alpha, I think, is uh, coming down the hill now, so maybe he'll come into the pits this time around. 45 laps completed by our race leader. He's about a better part of, well, more than three-quarters of a lap ahead of the, of the Alpha. Still out again this time around. One, two, three across the line, down the inside. What a move that was. Mark Wilkins tries to get through and takes the lead. So for the first time, we have a Hyundai leading the motor race here. And Robert Wiggins is right there trying to take advantage of perhaps a little snafu for Matt Pombo as they were coming round to lap another car. Victor Gonzalez just being unwittingly a part of that change for the lead. Oh, this side by side at West Bend, and there's almost a touch there. Under the bridge, they come down. Wiggins has got the inside line, should take second place, does take second place. In the pits now, in the pits now. Oh, he should have just pitted. Pombo should have pinned it. 56 minutes to go. All these starting drivers have to be out of the car within the next two or three laps. And Great move that, that, Jeremy, for the lead. Yeah, and what a gap he's pulled out on that lap. I mean, clear all of a sudden now, uh, Mark, Matt Pombo really struggling with the handling uh, on that uh, number 37, uh, hard to see it, that led so convincingly through the first 40-odd 40, 40 laps of the race. All of a sudden he was caught, and then Wiggins just uh, left him uh, for far behind just after just, uh, just one lap. And 
seventh position is uh, number 90. That's right behind. Uh, yeah, here comes Matt Pombo into the pits just now. That's late, right. I think. Yeah, that, that's, I, I think that's smart. He's lost the lead now. Shea Adam is down in the pit lane. Here's Matt Pombo, erstwhile leader for all but a couple of laps. Comes in now in the Honda Civic. And Ryan Eversley is jumping aboard this car. Now, he told us yesterday it is very hot in the cockpit of the FL5. I'm going to walk around by the driver's side, see if I can feel any of the heat coming out. It does feel warmer than normal race cars, John. I will give them full credit for that. They are doing a front tire change as well as a driver and full. It is a driver change as well for VGRT with the older spec Honda. New tires going on the front here too. And now Carl Whitmer has taken over for Victor Gonzalez. Oh, pouring out of the brakes of the old spec car. That's the sound of Eversley leaving. Great pit stop by LA Honda World. Still waiting on the fuel nozzle. Now the door closes as Victor Gonzalez finishes the pit stop. Carl knocks the Honda into gear. And he rumbles back down the pit lane as finally the pit board has waved and indeed it is alpha time the alfa romeo into the pits the giulietta which has won two races so far this year i say finally because Tim lewis has had his helmet on his fire suit done up for at least half an hour now i know that he knew he couldn't get in the car that early but he still wanted to get in the zone and now he is finally taking over behind the wheel of this number five machine fuel tires on the front and that driver change, but that is it for the Alpha team. Not that, that long, to be honest. I would have thought they could uh, have shortened up that stint a little bit for uh, for Ryan, but he stayed on the lead, lead lap just about. Uh, and ooh, yuck. Uh oh. Yikes, that was a bit of a scary move there as he pulls right across the front of the race leader. Mark Work is heading into the pit lane. So we'll have to see now whether that pit stop is going to be good enough and whether the uh, outlap for Tim Lewis can uh, get it back onto the lead lap again. But it's a big deficit to make up. He's going to make it three wins on the season for that number five, Alfa Romeo. As one expect, another brilliant stint here from Mark Wilkins leading this race now by uh, about three seconds over his teammate, Robbie Wickens. And neither of those two cars, nor the third Brian Hood at Autosport car, number one, Michael Lewis, has yet uh, to make it onto pit lane. So Mark Wilkins, 3.3 seconds to the good. I don't think he's coming in this time around. So let's take some pit reports. Shea Adam is with Dr. Will Tully. Well, that was quite a stint out there. You were pushing and battling the whole time. But the first question I've got to ask, the heat that's coming off of you, the sweat pouring off, is it because the cockpit of this car is a little bit hotter than what you're used to? Yeah, there's no doubt. This car is hotter than the old car, and we were trying to figure out what to do about that. Right now, we've just got a chill-out suit or a cold suit, and we're putting a chill-out in it so it lasts longer. But, yeah, the, the cockpit's hot. The, the foot box is really hot. Um, we're not sure how to solve that, though. Why is it that that's happening? It's the same engine, isn't it? Same engine, same gearbox. Uh, we're not sure how much heat shielding's different. Um, you know, and so we're just trying to learn this car. And, and there's so many other things we're focused on. I guess driver comfort's not the key. But yeah, it's, it's hot out there. It's, it's not bad here ambient, so it's, it's tolerable. Biggest issue we're having is tires. Do you think it'll require another stop at the end of this one for another set of tires? The fuel were good, tires maybe. It's the, the track's eating up the tires. I, I had a good first 35, 40 minutes, and then I just started dropping back. And we wanted to do a couple more laps for strategy, but I just couldn't do it. The tires went off, and I actually ran off through five. Had to, and we, we pitted that lap kind of urgently. Matt had some cords, so we'll have to see how they hold up. Thanks for the intel. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, very good. I mean, the questions that we've been asking all weekend, to be honest, about that car. And if they don't know, we're not going to find out, are we? Not sure how you um, how you actually rectify that, other than a bit more heat shielding and that adds race weight, I suppose. Down towards turn seven again. Here comes. The number 37, Ryan Eversley, has to go to the right-hand side as the leader dives at the pit. So that's the 37 back on the lead lap now as the leader, Mark Wilkins, comes into the pit lane, Shea Adam.
down towards the pit stall. And Sheer Adam is waiting for Mark Wilkins. He'll be getting out of the car, Sheer. It's Mason Felipe's turn, and he is very excited to get in this car as there's a large Hyundai contingent here, and they are cheering loudly, watching this pit stop. Actually, kind of cool. Time uh, Magazine every year does a dealer of the year, and the dealer who was awarded that this year is very local, only about 30 minutes from the track. So a lot of Hyundai support at the track this weekend, but the driver change is complete. Mark Wilkins is out. They've done new front tires for Mason Felipe. Just one pit box ahead of them. The championship leaders also win. Robbie Wickens has completed his driving duties for this weekend. He is staying in the pit lane as Harry Gottsacker, the Texan, takes over. And now up on the wall is the number one crew as well as the 98 its sister car well and truly out of the pit lane by a significant margin. But the number one is up on the wall. Taylor Hagler is ready to take over her two-time championship winning Hyundai. So it looks like people are splitting this in half, Jeremy, for the most part at least. If they can, that's the key. Uh, we, we heard uh, from that LA Honda World team, that's like what they wanted to do in car number 37, but the tire degradation just too much. Uh, and about five laps early than they wanted to is when that number 37 car came into pit lane. It's going to be awfully uh, hard, I think, to come back from that because uh, they can certainly get to the end uh, here on fuel. That's not an issue. The issue is the tyres. And again, that is why the number five team elected to stay out as long as they did. Ideally, they would have come in sooner to hand the car over from Roy Block, who's, who showed, showed a good pace today, did a nice job to keep that car on the lead lap before he brought it in. But uh, they would like to hand it over to Tim Lewis, who has been around this sport a lot longer than, than Roy has, has and uh, get him the faster driver in the car as soon as they can. But the tire degradation just not playing into that hand. Here, though, now comes a race leader. This is Michael Lewis onto the pit lane. So they're cycling through. This should be Ryan Eversley going to the lead of the race as that number 37 car. Where is that at the moment? Question asked. Answer is coming round through the West Bend at the moment. Shea Adam is watching the car in from the lead. And there go the air hammers for a change of tyres of at least of the front Michelin Shea. Oh, they are doing left sides, John. This is a little bit of trickery going on from the Brian Hurd Autosport group. Oh, no, wait. They have right sides as well. This is a four-tire stop. I don't remember the last time I saw one of these in a TCR race. As Michael Lewis completes the driver change and then walks over to the wall, he's not used to being the starting driver. That's not an honor he's normally afforded. He is the closer, but today his job is closed. It's time for Taylor Hagler to take this car to the checkered flat. They are just about done with the tire change. Now they are fuel nozzle comes out perfectly in time they're having trouble removing the air hose oh no it was jammed in there now they pull that out they pull the car off the air jacks taylor briefly stalls a bit manages to pull on the clutch to avoid the engine actually shutting off and then manages to get going let's see where she cycles out because she is all by herself right now no one in front yeah. no one behind uh, ahead of ryan eversley who's coming across the line right now and there goes Ryan into the lead. So he's now on 56 laps. And that means that the number one car is three corners ahead. So second place then will be the 98, Mason Felipe there, there go. Then Luca Mars, then Harry Gottsacker, 37, 98, 90 and 33. Honda Civic, Hyundai, 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 Hyundai. That's how they'll go through with Tyler Maxson in the 91 car in fifth position. So there's the, sorry, Jeremy, so there's the pit stops and it appears to me that actually LA Honda World have actually, they've nailed that. They've absolutely nailed that. They've got more lead now than they had when they came in. They have. The, the bad news is they're going to do a, a, an extra, uh, well, more laps on this set of tyres. Clearly they were struggling at the end of the first stint. Presumably, I mean, Ryan Eversley, his main focus right now you're going to be on not using too much of these yeah. Michelin tires too soon and hope he's got something for the end of this race so he's going to be kind of matching his pace here to those pursuing Hyundai's so Ryan instead of 
this is an interesting one, isn't it? So Ryan Eversley, instead of saving fuel here, will be doing whatever a driver can to save his tyres. Now, that means probably just lifting off. It's kind of like fuel saving, but he doesn't want to be going too hard into the corners. Here he comes down the front straight. Shea Adams got her mic open. Let's have a listen as he goes by. Lifts off and then breaks. You all even heard the, the brake squeal a little bit there, Shea. Now, is he noticeably lifting off uh, before he starts to break and taking a slightly different line in the big bend? He is lifting and braking at the exact same time at the five marker board, whereas everyone else, and you were able to hear a couple of other examples, are lifting and braking immediately at the three, almost the three and a half if they're being conservative. So Ryan is definitely in conservation mode. And that's really sensible because he's got the better part of nine and a half seconds to play with at the moment, Jeremy, and 44 minutes to get to the checkered flag. What he's got to do now, and he's got actually a decent uh, tract of land in front of him. The next car ahead of him is Taylor Hagler in seventh position. She's just going round Big Bend as he breaks for it now. So he hasn't got traffic to worry about. This is going to be about hitting his marks and trying not to slide that car around too much. That's exactly right. Uh, and if there's anybody who can do this, it's Ryan Overs. He's got massively experienced. As I said earlier on, this is his 127th start in this uh, Michelin Pilot Challenge series. Made his uh, debut way back in 2003, so it's been uh, 21 years in this uh, category of cars. He knows exactly what it takes to get this car home for me. There's a lot of success in Hondas over the years. He's got to manage his pace now. He's pulling away just a little bit the last couple of laps over the pursuing Mason Filippi now in that number 98 car for Mark Wilkins. But how is that gap going to uh, progress or decrease over the course of the remaining 43 minutes of this race? Fascinating stuff. 43 minutes to go in the Michelin Pilot Challenge. It's part of the FCP Euro Northeast Grand Prix weekend, presented by Liquid Molly. It is the Lime Rock 100. And at the moment, LA Honda World Racing in their brand new Honda Civic FL5, the new body shape in that lovely colorway with the white and dark uh, red. Is leading the race by just over nine seconds. Mason Felipe in the first of the Hyundais is in second, the number 98. That's the sky blue car with Harry Gottsacker in the 33. Just done that car's fastest lap of the race, 55.007. So it took about half a second out of the leader. The situation as it stands at the moment, if you are just joining us, first of all, where have you been and do you have a note for your absence? Second of all, you've missed some cracking racing already. Third of all, we will bring you up to date because we're those type of people. Ryan Eversley has been out much longer on his Michelin tyres than the cars that are following. That means he's got to take things easy, preserve them, so he's got some tyre performance to uh, fight with if that is necessary at the end of the race. And particularly if we do get the intervention of the Acura safety car and he then has to restart and battle. That's how it stands at the moment with 41 and a half minutes to go. But right now, the gap coming down, Jeremy, by three, four tenths of a lap, uh, of a second per lap, Ryan Eversley in full management mode. It's now down to 8.7 seconds. Yeah, it, 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 but it, it was 9.5. So yeah, a tenth or two perhaps, but I'm just looking at the lap times early. Wow. Yeah, early in the race, uh, the uh, Mike Pombo was doing 54s, uh, best lap race of 54.3. Ryan Eversley is doing 55s, 50, mid 55s. Uh, in fact, very consistent mid 55s. That's what he wants to be able to maintain to the end of the race, uh, is what he hopes. And that, that might be enough because uh, towards the end uh, of Matt Pombo's stint, he, he slipped into the 56s and then the 57s. And that's when the Hyundais came into their own. They were able to make up the ground that they had lost early on. 
uh, and then charge past and pull away. So uh, it's it's all about management now for Ryan Eversley. Don't get don't get too concerned about the fact that the Hyundai's might be inching a little bit closer. As long as it's inching, that's no problem. Yes. Yeah, uh, inching, not miling. Yes. Um, and it, it, I mean, it, it is, it's a balancing act. Oh, little bit of an overshoot at turn seven. Uh, that was, now, who was that? I think it was the 15 Denny DuPont Rockwell car that threw up the dust coming out of turn seven. Just caught it out the corner of my eye. So, yeah, Ryan in management mode at the moment. And, well, he's got plenty of experience in this category. Through comes Tim Lewis as he's fighting in that Alpha. The little black Giulietta with the wide wheel arches sitting in eighth position at the moment. Rory van der Stur has rejoined after another pit stop for the number 90 car. He's dropped down to eighth position, I think. Yes, he has. So yeah, he that's the car the that came in out of schedule with everybody else, maybe perhaps thinking, there was, they were hoping there was going to be a full course caution back on lap 25. So that was a 47-lap a stint uh, for... 37-lap uh, stint, excuse me, for number 90 car. Uh, and he was losing a good second a lap to the cars he was racing with before he just came in to put fresh tyres, hopefully on that number 90 uh, Hyundai uh, Veloster. 91. Tyler Maxson, Van der Stur, Elantra, blue and white car coming to the uphill now. Turns in, commits to that right-hander. And you really do have to commit there and know that the car is going to turn in and accelerate through there. It's uphill. If you're slightly late on the throttle application, it will cost you speed towards the West Bend. Then down the hill, coming to the line now. Eversley by 7.3 seconds now. Felipe is on a mission at the moment. Another half a second taken back last time around. 55-3 for the chasing pack. 55-4 for Harry Gottsacker. Then in fourth place, Tyler Maxim, 55-7. That's roughly the same as the leader at the moment. Traffic for the leader as he goes across the line. Ryan Eversley with a couple of cars ahead of him as he goes down into turn number one. Does not get by. This is going to cost him some time. Turns one and two, big bend. Really important to get a clean run through there. He's still following. This is all one line. Oh, my goodness me. This will be frustrating. Doesn't want to go offline. Doesn't want to work too hard. Has cleared the car into the uphill now. And I think it was T Taylor Hagler yes. that he went by. Yes, it was. Now through West Bend. Now he's got a good, now he's got a good gap. Now he can ra race his own lines. Now he can decide where he wants to put his own car. But I will guess that that's lost him at least another half a second. Of course, the cars behind him, Jeremy, have to go past the same traffic. He had to get past the number 10 of Alex Rockwell and the number one of Taylor Hagler. Uh, Taylor Hagler, uh, as Eversley goes through 56-5 last time around. Felipe, 55-7, 55-5. So that was a full second there. That's what traffic can do to you around here. Yeah, it really is. And uh, just a little bit farther back, uh, Tyler Maxson running in fourth position in car number 91. But to try and track him down is Mikey Taylor in that car that won the lot, most recent race, number 17, Unitronic JD, JDC Motorsports Audi. Meanwhile, out front, Ryan Eversley just doing the best he can to manage the pace of this car. Well, Ryan Eversley, being with Honda for a long time. And... This new car still very much in the early part of its racing development into Big Bend. 
for the 69th time. Yeah. Still 40, uh, 35 minutes to go. 56-0 last time around for the race leader. He lost three tenths of a second. But uh, Harry Gottsacker is, uh, is going to give uh, Mason Philippi something to think about. Yeah. Those who shared a car uh, last year. But uh, the... the where is he in the picture? On, my, on the scoring, he seems to be right behind it, but I can't see him in that picture. Got Saka is... Yeah, he should only be about seven tenths behind. Uh, meantime, the Alpha is right in the mix there. The first car a lap down, second car a lap down, because, of course, Taylor Hagler is a lap down as well. But Tim Lewis is coming back. And we'll see how that car goes. Officially, by the way, we have had news from Race Control and Daily Motorsports that the number 70 car is retired. I think we pretty much guessed that, but that is an official retirement now. So Rob McGuinness does not get to drive in this championship. It would have been his debut this weekend. Mason Felipe now has gone past the Black Alpha. And got Saka coming through, trying to get through as well. So the Alpha not in that fight between the two blue Hundes as they go through the uphill at turn five and towards West Bend at six. A no, lap, lap down, down for that That's car. Right. That's right, but he's uh, closing in on uh, Taylor Hagler, who's next ahead of him, just uh, about three seconds up the road. But uh, Tim Lewis then splitting that battle for second and third between Mason Philippi and Harry Gottsacker. And those two cars, number 98 and number 33, they are battling for the championship lead. Number 33 has the championship lead at the moment by just 20 points over the number 98. Number 17 car currently running in the fifth position, but closing on Tyler Maxson is another 10 points back only in third place. Three wide again going into the turning point of Big Bend and it's the number 17 of Mikey Taylor and it's right there the number 91 so that's a change of position there I think that's Mike, Mikey it, Taylor gone through. by the van der Stur racing Elantra yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah, again as they were up. going past traffic yeah had been closing up certainly Several good battles. Rory, Rory van der Sturr in the uh, Veloster, kind of a 90. He's uh, fending off Carl Whitman. That's a battle for eighth and ninth. Also one lap down to the race leaders. 71 laps completed now. 56.0 last time around for the race leader. Uh, and uh, the pursuing Hyundai, half a second quicker. 55-5 for Mason Philippi. Harry Gottsecker a tad quicker than that in third position, kind of a 33. Yeah, Harry Gottsecker taking it to the end. He's only six seconds away from the leader. Tim Lewis right in there with the two hundreds. He's losing nothing at the moment. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that uh, Harry Gottsecker will be overly delighted with this but he's not it, it, in point of fact Jeremy he's not actually got into a position uh, to uh, make the pass there uh, on that black alpha which itself is trying to chase down a position albeit uh, a lap off the lead Taylor Hagler is only a second or so up the road from Tim Lewis and, and therefore he wants to get on with it as well yeah, but I think uh, Ryan Lewis, uh, excuse me, Tim Lewis, in that alpha, he's catching the overall leader, Ryan Everson. So he wants to get himself back on the lead lap. Still over half an hour to go in this race. If he can get himself back on the lead lap, uh, then uh, he's got to get past one of the Hyundais as well, of course. Uh, but uh, that's, that's what he's aiming for. So he's going to run as fast as he can uh, and still look after those tyres. Uh, and uh, he'll be in a, in a lap or two, he'll be in a position to make up a position over Taylor Hagler, but he remains one lap down. Another 56-1 for uh, our race leader, uh, Ryan Eversley. 55-3 uh, last time around. Wow, for Mason Philippi. 3.3 seconds only to get from first to second. Great manoeuvre using the traffic by Mikey Taylor. Came out of turn seven, had a great run 
on Tyler Maxon in the blue and white number 91 as they were going past the, the number 15 of Denis Dupont in the Rockwell Automotive Development and managed to get, do that difficult thing, the outside pass into Big Bend, turn one, Good defensive block thrown to the right-hand side. That's I don't have a problem with that at all from the Van der Stur racing car and Tyler Maxson. It was uh, the right thing to do, but a big commitment from Mikey Taylor that took him round the outside, and he still managed to get turned in for the second part of Big Bend. Pretty impressive manoeuvre that, albeit a little bit traffic-assisted, but that's what you've got to do, Jeremy, take the chances when they are presented to you. That's exactly right. And uh, once again, another 56-0 there for Ryan Eversley as he completes lap 74. But the agonising for him, it's still almost half an hour to go, just under half an hour remaining in this race. Mikey Taylor's charging on there. He is about 20 seconds behind uh, the uh, third place Hyundai. That gap has actually stretched out a bit over the last few laps, but he certainly turned some good laps in that number 17 uh, JDC Unitronics uh, uh, Audi in fourth place. Eversley's gap now under four seconds. Just on 30 minutes to go. When does he get released, Jeremy? When do the, when do the team say, all right, now, now you can pick up the pace? Because that's what he's waiting for, quite clearly. The race leader? Yeah. Lap, final lap of the race. <laughs> oh, you're a hard. If you were on no. the pit, I never want you on my pit I'm, wall. No, I'm afraid so. Yeah, look, he's been around the sport long enough. He knows what it's going to take to win. He knows he's going to manage his pace. Uh, he's uh, last lap around. He, he, the gap between first and second was, well, but by recent standards, pr pretty close. He, he lost a couple of tenths of a second only. Another 56.1 for our race leader, Ryan Eversley. He comes down to the West Bend now and turns in. Uh, mercifully free of traffic again. Denis Pomp is the next car ahead of him, the number 15 Rockwell Auto Development car. He's into turn three, the left-hander, as the leader comes to the start-finish line. So it's going to be a while before he has to worry about traffic. Probably two, three, four, five laps. He's got to be thinking about behind rather than in front at the moment because Mason Felipe uh, has cut it down to 2.6 seconds. Yeah, 56.3 last time around for Ryan Eversley, and that's hey. it's not going to get it done. And, but but look at Tim Lewis hanging yeah, on to the well, back of Mason Philippi. Yeah. He's been dragged towards the leader, and if he can stay with that Hyundai, then maybe he can get his lap back. And if he's back on the lead lap with, you know, 25 minutes to go, he's still in the game. That's exactly right. I mean, he's splitting the second and the third place cars. They're both, uh, they've all of them got past Taylor Hagler. So uh, Tim Lewis is up to sixth position now. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, and both he and the car directly in front of him, which is Mason Philippi in second place, they are steadily catching Ryan Eversley. The gap now down to less than two seconds. We will be nominating our Michelin moment of the race before the checkered flag. Got half an hour to go. The whole field's in with a shout at the moment. That outside pass into turn one by Mikey Taylor, that was pretty impressive. You don't see that very often. Not done as cleanly as that either, in fairness. I'll have to keep that one in mind. Let's go down to Shea Adam, who has a, an update from Hyundai Elantra Country and Brian, Brian Hurt at Autosports, number 98 car. Shea, what do you have? I just went in and checked in with Mark Wilkins and said, when are you going to unleash Mason? And he said, we never told him to hold back. This is pushing. We are a little concerned about tire wear, of course, but they managed to go halfway through the race before their tires more or less gave up. Whereas the competition, i.e. the 37 LA Honda World Car, when it came in, the tires were a little bit rugged at that stage. And that was a lot earlier on in the race. So Mason Felipe is pushing, but he's being delicate. And I told Mark Wilkins I wasn't going to be rude and put a microphone under his nose while he's this nervous and he said yeah thanks. I don't really like this point it's a lot easier to be in the car <laughs> <laughs> 
every driver that you ever talk to would rather be in the car, Jeremy Shaw, at this point than sitting on the pit wall wondering what their teammate can possibly do to win the race. It must be excruciating. Let's be honest, drivers are pretty much control freaks anyway. They like to be in their, their own little space. This must be horrible for them. Yeah, real nail-biting stuff here for uh, for all of these contenders. I mean, you're inexorably closer. Mason Filippi is getting in that second position. His lap times mid low 55s, so 55.3 last time around for Mason Filippi in that second position car. But it's now less than a second from first to second. He's going to be right with him next time around. What can Ryan Eversley do here to keep that uh, Hyundai behind him? I don't think very much is a short answer, but uh, this is, maybe it's going to give an opportunity now for, for uh, Tim Lewis yes. to get back onto the lead lap. That's now, what uh, Tim is hoping for, for sure. Now, what do you and do now? Away if a little you're bit Tim. now from Harry Gottsacker in yes. third position all of a sudden. Two and a half seconds, the gap between the back of the second place Hyundai, the number 98, coming into West Bend now, and the third place car. So, what do you do if you're Tim Lewis? Do you drag past the 98 and then try and get past the 37 on your own? Or do you sit with the 98 and let him pull him past, pull you past the Honda that's the leader at the moment and then see if you can deal with him after that? He's clearly got a very similar pace to Mason Philippi in, in that number 98 Honda. So, I mean, do you twist or stick, Jeremy? It's a tough one for the, 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 the uh, Alpha driver. Yeah, and again, though, the Alpha, you know, that came in five laps earlier than they wanted to. So he's got to do a longer second stint, uh, Tim Lewis Jr., than did uh, Roy Block in the first part of stint of this race. And that, as we've seen, can be critical. Flashing the lights there is Mason <laughs> Philippi uh, right behind Ryan Eversley. Uh, Mason, good try. I don't think that's going to put off someone like Ryan Eversley. He's seen that one before. Oh, hang on, he's flashing the lights. I'll pull over and let him go. Yes. Yeah. 55 8, that was the best lap that uh, Ron Eversley has done in a while, so he's, he's clearly got the message here. Uh, well, <laughs> he, did, he knew the message was there because uh, he'd seen uh, closer and closer coming that number uh, 898 car. Into the pits for Denis Dupont. Dupont. Fuel and tyres for the Rockwell Autosport Development Audi, left side only uh, for that car. Top two plus the first car off the lead lap. Line astern, going through the right-hander and down the Nornim straight. 82 Fahrenheit on the track, that's 28 Celsius. And about 27 in the air, that's about the same, isn't it? 81, 82. And we still have 23 minutes remaining. So Ryan Eversley's nine and a half, nearly 10 second lead has now disappeared. He's managed that part of it since he came out, or since the pit stop cycle was completed. So he's managed that. Now he's got to manage the last 22 and a half minutes, Jeremy. Indeed, and he's just turned it the best lap he's turned in a long, long while. 55-6, the last time he was down to 55-6, was back on lap 61, 20 laps ago. So, uh, you know, he's, he's pushing now as hard as he can, he knows uh, the, the, the kind of game is up. He's hoping that those, these tyres aren't going to degrade any more than they are right now, and he's going to be able to uh, to run a similar pace to the end. Whoopsie, there's a big... Uh, yeah. That was two Hyundais coming through uh, the left-hander, the number 91 in the hands of Tyler Maxson, and the number 74, I think it was. Yes, Cabot it was. Bingham. Uh, Cabot see. Bingham. Uh, he's already got damage on the left front of that car with the old what we used to see on the previous generation Audis where it looked like a, an angry owl flapping its wings. Now he's got one to match that on the left front on the right rear. It's opposite corners uh, for that car and the wheel arch extensions. Now to quote a very famous motorsport commentator uh, here in the UK Murray Walker, catching is one thing, passing is very much another. And I just wonder, Jeremy, whether Ryan Eversley has, has played this really nicely tactically, sell himself into a rhythm. He's picked the pace up gently over the last three or four laps because he's had to. Yep. But we've not seen at all Mason Phillippe get anywhere near uh, a proper, determined opportunity to make a pass here. 
Correct. I mean, we talked about it earlier on, didn't we, that Ryan Eversy was just running the pace he felt was good enough to keep those tyres in good enough condition to get to the end of the race. He's now uh, just over 20 minutes remaining. As you say, he's turning his fastest laps, uh, 55-4 last time around, 55-6 uh, this time as he crosses the line. So that's uh, quicker than it's been for quite a while. And he's going to try now to uh, keep himself in the lead of this race, a tremendous battle. If he get able to do so, that would be a magnificent effort. Yeah, and I, I think this is very, very smart. He knew he had to keep some performance for the last few laps. Well, this is going to be the last 25 laps for him. This last 20 minutes is going to feel like 20 hours. Although, do you know what? I'm not sure it is. He's got himself into a groove. He's putting the car where he wants to. At the moment, he's not modifying his line down into turn one. Big bend. A little bit of side-by-side -side action. LA Honda World uh, racing with Mike uh, Lamara having a go at the... That's the number 73 car. Having a go at that number 74, Cabot Bingham. I think there's laps between those two. So Cabot off, a little bit off the pace in terms of the timing and scoring at the moment. So didn't fight that one too hard. But Mike Lamara in 10th position at the moment, Cameron Bingham in 12th. And as I say, two laps between those two. Just going back to the other LA Honda World Car at the front, you know, Ryan Eversley's in a nice groove. He's driving the way he wants. He's not even started driving defensively, even with Mason Philippi right there with him. Uh, and now he's pulled out about a second. So Philippi, now I wonder if he's thinking, right, I have to save my tyres a little bit now and then make one concerted effort that I know he's going to stick. Yeah, I mean, you know, Ryan's turning his best laps of the race, 55.33 last time around. Nice. That's, I think, probably the quickest lap he's done. He did 55.5 on lap 56, which is, uh, well, a handful of laps or so after he came into uh, the, uh, the pit lane. Um, so the tyres were fresh then, but uh, you know he's saved what he can uh, and he's now turning you know, the laps fast enough to stay ahead of number 98 car. What's interesting to me particularly is how Garrett Harry Gottsacker in third place has dropped way, way back now yeah. from Mason Filippi. He was uh, s sandwiching the, the Alpha. This is fallen back just a little bit behind Mason Filippi, but not much. But uh, Harry Gottsack has full 5.6 seconds behind in the third position. Yeah. So is that Gottsacker in tyre trouble? And, and what's his times um, like re with regard to Mikey Taylor? Well, last time, actually, they were almost exactly the same, 56-0, 56-0. Yeah, that, that gap, gap has been about the same, really, since Mikey Taylor got past number 91 car of, uh, of Tyler Maxson. Uh, it's uh, 20, around about 21 seconds, uh, and it's been that way for the last 10 laps or so. So uh, those are running very similar pace, but uh, they are losing a little bit of ground now to this, this top two. But Harry, uh, Mason Philippi is really putting the, uh, the pressure on here. He's kind of a 98, uh, holding a second position in the championship at the moment just. Uh, but this, uh, if he could finish here, that would move him up into the championship lead. Uh, but it's a long, long way to go. He's just uh, 25 right. years of age from Alamo in California and uh, really go. doing an excellent job here putting the pressure on Ryan Eversley. Yeah, and he's as close now as he has been for a couple of laps. There is traffic ahead being the uh, number 10. Uh, that is sitting at the back of the field. Alex Rockwell in the Rockwell Autosport development car. Oh, a little bit of a curb strike there for Ryan Eversley into turn one. Just maybe misjudged his turning a little bit. And Mason Phillippe right there now, has to be right there, yeah. just in case there's a little fumble. I just saw a slight difference in the body language of the chasing Hyundai, the number 98 car in second, behind that red and white LA Honda World car. Flash of the lights now from a very elegant front end, by the way, on that new Honda. I like it a lot, they've really cleaned that up. Little flash of the lights from the leader to let the lapped car know that they're coming through and they both dive through on the inside, but they had to go onto the dirty right-hand side of the track going into West Bend. Now coming down the hill, Tim Lewis beginning to lose, uh, lose touch with them as well as he now comes onto the front straight in that first of the lapped cars. Yeah, there was just a little bit of more energy going in 
to the front end of that Brian Herder Autosport car in second place as they saw potential opportunities there again, as close as he has been for a while. I've not seen, because we've not had a concerted effort for an overtake, Jeremy, I've not seen either car have a particular advantage or disadvantage around the seven corners and one and a half miles here, have you? I haven't. No, I completely agree. And uh, the gap between first and second, has uh, second and third, excuse me, has stabilised over the last three or four laps. Uh, the Alpha is uh, hanging tough in between those two on the racetrack, but still a lap down. Shannon here, by the way, for Taylor Hagler in car number one. She's running in seventh place. She lost that position to Tim Lewis, but she's turned into good laps as well. 56-2 last time around for Taylor Hagler in that car number one. Two-time defending series champion along with Michael Lewis, and that was actually well. Oh, same sort of pace, certainly, as the leaders in this race. So good effort by Taylor. Another car coming in. That's both the Rockwell cars that have been in. The Audi coming in from the back of the field. Here we go. Now, this is that concerted effort that we were talking about. Coming through the right-hander up onto the quarter paddle. This is Mason Felipe deciding that with 14 minutes to go, nearly 15 minutes to go, he's got to have a go now. And try and make some kind of move. He's right with them, now down into turn number seven. Great exit from Ryan Eversley there. But the Hyundai uses a little bit less road. There is a bit more tyre maybe under that Hyundai. Down towards turn one, not close enough. But there's more traffic, Jeremy, and this time it's the number 74 of Cabot Bingham. That will be the next car that provides an opportunity for that second place car. Yeah, and they're closing him on, on him a couple of seconds a lap uh, or faster than the number 74 car. And he's uh, already had a couple of inches. Ooh, he looks to the inside there, does Mason Filippi. Uh, left the door right open, did Ryan Eversley, but uh, Mason Filippi not quite close enough to die through it. But really significant tyre wear on that number 10 that has just come in for Alex Rockwell. They're running, they were running right to the very ragged edge, literally, of the tyre's performance level. The left rear of that car, I think I heard Shea tell me, was uh, beginning to give up. They had no choice but to come in with uh, about the 13 minute mark to go. In through Big Ben, turn one. Now, this is where it appears that if there is any kind of advantage, Mason Philippi has it right here, and there's traffic. That might help, it might hinder. Uh, nice driving by Cabot Bingham, stays right out of the way. Does not influence that battle for the lead. One iota. And Ryan Eversley lives to fight for another lap. Wow. This is outstanding driving. I know they're not door to door, they're not exchanging paint, but let me tell you now, and Jeremy will confirm this, this is on the edge motor racing. I'm not yeah. sure there's much that either of them can give any more now. Oh, another great exit. Here's the chance, down into turn one. Philippi will have to go very, very late on the brakes. He pulls to the right-hand side. Here he comes down the inside, and he takes the lead. That was set up from the previous corner. Ryan Eversley couldn't move across because the Hyundai was already there and he can't move in reaction to what's going on behind you. Really, really good four laps or so by Mason Philippi to set that up. He knew he had to be close. He knew his time was now and he's gone through and taken the lead. That might well be the Michelin moment of the race. Fantastic work by the Hyundai driver. Yeah, no question about it. He bided his time there. I'm surprised, surprised that uh, Ryan Eversley didn't close the door on him. He had the opportunity to do so before they got down into the braking area. Didn't. And uh, Mason Philippi uh, you know, saw his opportunity and went for it. Brilliant pass by young Mason. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, Ryan's not going to do anything silly. He's not no. going to... He knows, he knows Very that the, the Hyundai driver. is faster uh, at this stage in the race. Uh, and, you know, he's done... But since he came into the pits, he's done 40... Uh, five laps, the number 37 car did 48 uh, laps in its first stint, so it's around about now that you know that, that kind of falls off a cliff in terms of its tyre performance for that Honda. 
uh, but he's got to hope now that something goes awry for Mason Philippi. Now, the next question is, can Harry Gottsacker close that gap? It's six and a half seconds at the moment. Mikey Taylor in from fourth position. Now, that, I'm presuming, is tyres as well as side by side into turn seven. The leader puts uh, another lap on the other uh, Van der Stur racing car, front Rory Van der Stur, as they go through. Shea Adam in the pit lane, that must be tyres for that car that was in fourth. Well, John, I want you to listen to something or something that's not happening right now. You hear an engine noise and that, how it's coughing that, and spluttering. It, that doesn't they sound like it's fuel. running on four. Oh, no way! They ran out of fuel. They coasted into the pit lane, attached the fuel nozzle. They let it go as full as it could. It was Mikey trying to start it the entire time. They had the fuel probe attached. Thankfully, it did restart, but they were short by a bunch. Ten minutes short, Jeremy. That's yeah. not a small amount of fuel. No, I mean, they came in uh, 35 minutes into uh, this 100-minute race, so they were looking to go, what's that, uh, 35, 65 minutes, and obviously not able to do so because they're, well, 10 minutes short. I'm surprised they're that far out. Maybe they didn't get all the fuel Correct. they thought of during that car. pit stop. Yeah. Certainly would have been tight in any case. Wow, so that car's going to drop way down. That will put Tyler Maxson and the number 91 Van der Stur Racing Elantra up into fourth. Tim Lewis still off the lead lap, but now into fifth in the Alpha. Just four laps, uh, just four cars on the lead lap. I have to say, I didn't expect that when we started this race 90 minutes ago. No, I didn't either, and that's uh, going to move the Alpha up into uh, the fifth position, and still one lap down. Uh, but uh, Taylor Hagler, by the way, is closing on the Alpha. She's only 2.6 seconds behind now in car number one. That's going to be a battle for fifth position in the closing stages of this race. I think she's got the pace uh, to, to pull him in. She, she was a, a second a lap quicker last time around. Uh, Rory van der Stur, he's about 11 seconds farther back down the road. That gap between the number one and the number 90 has stayed pretty similar for the last uh, portion of this race. Still only one car out of the race, the Dyla Motorsports number 70 machine, the Hyundai, uh, lost that after 20 minutes or thereabouts, 23 laps. That car uh, went... Question now. Excuse me, John. I'm sorry, so lost, sorry. lost a wheel, remember, and went straight on at turn six at the West Bend. The good news, by the way, is the wheel did not leave the track area. It uh, didn't... Um, go over the barriers or anything like that. Uh, that car was uh, safely parked out of the way up at the West Bend. Sorry, Jeremy, go ahead. No, well, the, 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 uh, the, the uh, focus now is can Ryan Eversley maintain second position because uh, he lost about a second last time around to Harry Gottsacker, who uh, is still about four seconds behind. Well, it was three seconds now as he comes yeah. across the line. So uh, time ticking away is still seven and a half minutes remaining. That's another, what, eight laps, basically. Uh, so se uh, at least seven. No, it would be eight laps to go. Yeah. Uh, so the, this is going to be a, a tall order for Ryan Eversley, I think, to hold on to second position. Yeah, and it does seem, and I hope I'm not putting the curse of the commentator on any of the... Uh, Korean cars that the Hyundais are looking after their tyres better on the longer runs. Now, you know, that they could have set up the cars differently, run a little less camber, putting a little bit more of the flat of the yeah. tyre onto the road. They've also had uh, their longer runs have been slightly shorter, if that makes any sense. Sounds a bit back to front, but you know what I mean? They've split the race up differently as they now are under seven minutes to go. And Ryan Eversley, after fighting a fabulous rear guard action, uh, I think now the goose uh, is, if not cooked, then the alarm is about to go off on the stove because yeah. he's got not one, but two Hyundais closing in on him. Yeah. Uh, not and, both uh, in position, mind you. 
Well, no, Taylor Hagler is right behind. Oh, that's, uh, that's the, now. Uh, he, she has got past uh, Tim Lewis in the Alpha, so that, that battle for a uh, fifth position, as uh, said, was developing, has done so, and now emphatically in favor of Taylor Hagler. This is a super drive by Taylor, uh, and she is, uh, uh, that's probably about the best she can do, because she's uh, uh, quite a long way behind Ta Taylor Max, uh, Tyler Maxson who's in fourth position and still on the lead lap. Yeah, but, and she, uh, she's the first car now off the lead lap. Here's the, here's the second place going to go this time around into turn one. I suspect that right where well, he, he can't even get the power down on the straight. He hasn't fought, fought either of those Hyundais going through. So it's now, well, Tyler Maxson is 26 seconds back and surely, in just five minutes, he's not going to make that up uh, on Ryan Eversley. So it looks like it will be a podium for the new Honda Civic FL5 TCR. But certainly the Brian Herter Autosport machines and the Van der Stur Racing Elantra as well seem to have made the better of the setup and the tyre management choices. Mason Fullerby now cleared off into the distance. He's yeah, already absolutely. into turn one, and we're waiting for the other cars to come through for second position. Now the it's 14 seconds. Yeah, that's well, extraordinary. That second, second and a half on that last lap over Harry Gottsacker, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, the other guy to watch uh, right now is 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 probably Mikey Taylor, who's who's closed right up under the tail of Carl Whitmer, trying to get to eighth place back in that uh, Audi that made a second pit stop just a handful of laps ago. And every time now that Ryan Eversley comes up even to another car, he's really struggling. He can't go offline. It's not just about cornering. It's about braking. It's about accelerating. Mike Lamara. Uh, at the moment, holding up the two Hyundais who are, uh, or Harry Gottsacker, who's in second, and uh, Taylor Hagler, who is in fifth. As I say, I don't think she's going to catch Tyler Maxson because she's off the lead lap. She will finish one lap down yeah. as we are into the last four minutes, Jeremy. Yeah, and uh, Tim Lewis in the Alpha, he's, a bit, he's about four seconds behind the Taylor, but uh, closing in. On, on, actually, just gone past has been as Rory van der Stur in the uh, number 90 car who's charging hard here in the late stages in that Hyundai Veloster. He's just got past uh, Tim Lewis. Can he now catch Taylor Hagler with just uh, three minutes remaining? He's not far behind. And Mike Lamar is going to unlap himself from the Alpha. Uh, this is extraordinary. The, the guys who have not looked after their tyres are paying a heavy, heavy price here. I, I say not looked after their tyres, who have pushed their tyres longer. Uh, that has not paid off. The early pit stops did not pay off here. And into the pit lane, no, just pulling over to one side. The Finally, the number 73, Mike Lamaret car, has through with an amazing differential in grip. That's one of the Rockwell cars coming through. I'm guessing that's the 15. It is. It's Danita Pump who stopped a little earlier on with uh, very little left in terms of the left rear tyre. And now with a surfeit of grit, of grip, uh, being able to pick his way through past the cars that are ahead of him on the track. And he's a couple of laps down, in fact, three laps down. Uh, on the leaders. The Alpha, by the way, has given up the fight. Tim Lewis into the pit lane. Uh, Shea was watching that. Oh, and is this a side-by-side -side incident? And Taylor Hagner's been nerfed out of the way. Oh, my goodness me. Rory van der Stur in a battle for position into the right-hand side door, going into the West Bend and kept his foot in. That was, well, forceful in the extreme. Looks like Taylor can't get the car restarted. Disaster for what had been a decent run there. Tim Lewis will come round in a moment or two. Definitely a better run uh, by the Veloster down the inside. Wasn't quite there. He's 
up to the up to the door and there's a nice tire mark in between the front and the rear door yeah he caught her very quickly the last couple of laps he made up about four or five seconds uh, on uh, the on the number one car he was four seconds behind uh, two laps ago uh, so he was much 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 quicker he had a good run going up the hill she tried to close the door did she close it a little bit too late i'd like to have another look at that one it'll be under review Shame, it is under review because jeremy it is under review yeah, yeah. quick uh, paul from my core commentators michelin moment of the race share adam uh, the pass by Felipe for the lead. Pass for Felipe by for the lead, says Shea Adam. Uh, I'm going to go for the Mikey Taylor pass uh, round the outside that we saw earlier on. It's not ultimately um, stood him in any good stead. Uh, there was some good driving by Ryan Eversley as well. Jeremy, what's your call? Moment of the race, is yeah, the uh, moment. Thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah, moment. Yeah. Tough one, tough one. Um, yeah, what Shea, Shea's move was it was a move by uh, by, by Mason Philippe Philippe to take the lead. Yeah, to take the lead. It, it was impressive, particularly on someone like Ryan Eversley. I mean, he stalked him uh, for lap after lap after lap, saw the opportunity and went for it. Can't ask for much more than that, can you? Okay, by a vote of two to one, then the. Pass for the lead is the Michelin moment of the race. Mason Philippe, in, in fairness, it was more than just a moment. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, it adds up. It was about four or five laps of constant pressure. He moved up, he knew he had the opportunity, he knew he had the grip advantage. And so our Michelin moment of the race for the pilot challenge for the Lime Rock 100 at the FCP Euro Northeast Grand Prix this weekend, presented by Litwin Molly, Michelin moment of the race going to Mason Philippi for his pass for the lead. Managed to get that all sorted out before the chicken flag came out. It is out now and it will be Brian Herder Autosport, the number 98 Hyundai, who takes the victory and the full points through the chequered flag. Harry Godsacker backs up his teammate in second place. Taylor Hagler got going again, but will be no better than seventh after that uh, strong manoeuvre at the end there by Rory Vandester, who finishes across the line in fifth. There goes Harry, Harry Gottsacker in second, waiting for Ryan Eversley to come through to see if he hangs on to third position. He goes across the line now and does. Good drive from Ryan as well. Let's get to Shea Adam. Celebrating with his crew is Mark Wilkins. Second win of the year, fifth podium out of six races. You guys are now championship leaders again. It's feeling pretty good, isn't it? Oh, what a great day. I mean, it, I think this one really came down to qualifying, to be honest. Um, you know, we had to really lay it out yesterday to get on the front row. Um, and I think it really dictated our race today. So uh, kudos to the team, Chris, uh, Josephine, all our guys. Mason did a great job. Um, the car was really hooked up. Um, we, we had a great balance. We made improvements all day. We started in practice thinking we might be a bit behind the eight ball, but we, we found it. And uh, this is just a fantastic result. So it's a lot of racing to go, but Mason and I like driving together. It's a, it's a good deal. What do you make of Mason's drive out there, particularly the stalking, the, the very meticulous plotting of how to pass Eversley and getting it done? Yeah, you know, um, Mason's just really come on. He's just doing a great job, and we're great friends. We have a lot of fun racing together, so there's a lot of fun, and when it's fun, it's different. You know, we just work well. Everything flows. We like the same car. Um, you know, I think that qualifying yesterday gave a lot of confidence to the whole squad. And, and, you know, he put in a fantastic drive. So this is huge for him. This is him bringing it home to the checker. And, you know, that's what we want to do. We want these guys to come out and show what they can do. And he just did a great job. Well, congrats on the win. I know at Laguna, it was you bringing the car into victory late. Now you get to go celebrate with your teammate in a different way. Oh, I can't wait. Thank you. Just to square a circle there, no action. The inf incident involving Tyler Hagler and Rory van der Stur reviewed. No action uh, on that. So Rory van der Stur will be credited with fifth place. Let me quickly run down. We give you the top three. Tyler Maxson and the number 91 van der Stur. Elantra uh, in fourth, fifth for the Veloster. Uh, and the number 90 car, so fourth and fifth for the Van der Stur racing team. Mikey Taylor comes home uh, for Unitronic in the Audi in the 17 car in sixth, seventh for Taylor Hagler after that late race barge. 
then the number uh, eighth position, the eighth position rather for Victor Gonzalez Racing in their Honda number 99. Tim Lewis with a fading uh, alpha at the end, stop for new tyres to get him home. Two laps off the lead there for Tim in the number five car. Mike Lamar at LA Honda World's second Civic in 10th. 11th to need a pump who was charging at the end with those new tyres. But he wished he'd stopped earlier in that number 15. Cabot Bingham stayed out of the way of the leaders. Nicely done at the end for uh, Daily Motorsports and Alex Rockwell and Rockwell Autosport Automotive Developments. Autosport Development, excuse me. Uh, the last of the finishers in the Audi number 10 in 13th position. Jeremy Shaw has been doing the arithmetic and... Uh, I think we can say that the 98 Brian Herter team have gone to the back of the lead of the championship, Jeremy. Well, they're already there, but it's a different car now. Uh, as Jay was saying, the uh, number 98 crew of Mason Filippi and Mark Wilkins with that win today, as Mark was telling us, the second win of the season for that team. They went also at, uh, at uh, Wellington Raceway Laguna Seca. They will now have 1,800 points, 10 ahead only of Harry Gottsacker and Robbie Wickens, who agonisingly, for the fourth time this season, have to settle for a second-place finish. Another 100 points behind them, having made up a couple of positions in the closing stages after making that second uh, tyre swap, will be Mikey Taylor and uh, and Chris Chris Miller. So they will ma maintain third in the points table. Manufacturers, this has moved Hyundai ahead of Audi. 1,940 points now unofficially for Hyundai to the 1,900 of Audi. Uh, and Honda will move ahead of Alfa Romeo. Uh, 1840 to 1820, so just 100, 120 points covering all four manufacturers. Smashing race, the single class worked really well around here. Uh, really interesting how it all played out. I think I'll have to watch it again just to work out what happened and when, because those strategic changes, if they were strategic or if they were forced, uh, we're going to have to understand that. We'll reconvene with the Michelin Pilot Challenge at Rhodes America. We'll have that all for you as well. Uh, can't wait for that one. Goes back to the standard two hours race and we bring back the GT4, the GS classes as well. What a weekend at Lime Rock Park for the FCP at Euro Northeast Grand Prix presented by Liqua Molly. Hope you've enjoyed what we've brought you here from Shea Adam. Jeremy Shaw and me, John Hindall. Thanks to Aaron and all the team up at Charlotte for the pictures. Of course, uh, particularly Jim Dabty working on audio. It was Tim and Rob up in London making sure our radio audio went to the world. The responsible adult, as ever, Eve Hewitt. Enjoy your racing weekend. Pick some good things to watch tomorrow and then you can tell us about it when we're back next weekend for the deluxe Porsche Carrera Cup North America. Two races, Shay and I on duty for that from Road America and then the full gang back together at Road America just after that. From Lime Rock Park, from IMSA Radio and IMSA TV, it's a very good Saturday evening. Bye-bye. This programme is a Radio Show Limited production. For more, check IMSAradio.com and subscribe to IMSA Radio wherever you